Hello? Yeah, 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 I know. I know there's a party going down today. <laughs> Bro, I'm dressed as a doctor, man. You'll see. You'll see what I'm dressed up as. Don't worry, I'll be there. Alright, I'll see you there then, yeah? Alright, cool. I won't be late. Wait me! What? Another me? How is this possible? I'm you. Two days from now. If you go to this party, Halloween will be destroyed forever. Thanks to some friends, I was brought back to this time to warn you before it's too late. I don't understand. Dr. White, you know him. I know him? Yes. He found himself a power somehow. No one knows really. And when he did, everything to do with Halloween was outlawed, destroyed. Costumes, people, things, movies, books, just everything you can imagine is gone. I know this is gonna sound ridiculous, but you, I, are our only hope for survival. You must review and complete and compare Costume Quest 1 and 2. Why are you wearing a different shirt to me? We don't have much time. Are you going to do it? I suppose I don't have a choice, okay. Cuts Quest 1 and 2 was developed by Double Fun Productions and published by THQ and Manjesco Entertainment on October 19, 2010 and the second on October the 31st, 2014. Both games do things differently enough to make a valid opinion on which one you might like. The first game follows the two kids where they come into a new neighborhood and it just so happens to be Halloween, they go out and do some trick-or-treating when suddenly one of the siblings, depending on who you didn't choose, gets abducted by a monster thinking it's a giant candy and it's your job to save them. As you go around you make some friends and they join you in your quest to save your sibling. As far as the story goes, it's really simple and there's not much to write home about. All of the dialogue is text based with no voice acting. This isn't a bad thing but something to know about both games. As far as writing goes, it's fine. None of the jokes really landed with me but I did like the characters. Everyone in your party is fun and they all have cute bits of dialogue. But the main game is generally boring compared to the DLC Grubbins on Ice. They really stepped up the jokes and it actually made me laugh out loud and it introduced the character I think every Costume Quest fan likes, Shady the Grubbin. The DLC is way more interesting in story but it's something you need to play to understand the second game's story if you plan on playing it. Whereas the second game is way more fun. So right after the DLC which takes place a few months after the first game the gang is back into the portal verse where they manage to get back to the first game's Halloween but something's amiss. The local dentist Dr. White is acting shady. He somehow makes a deal with a time wizard to go back in time where he steals a doll that holds the grubbins in place where he uses them to destroy Halloween. From the future another portal opens up where one of the kids grown up tells the two kids to hop in to find a way to save Halloween. In this time period Dr. White had created a dictatorship for himself and it's your job to go through time to stop him with new and old characters appearing and reappearing. The second game is honestly far better than the first with the story. It went places where it surprised me and it took the parts of the DLC that I enjoyed and created something better. The jokes this time around were funny and again I laughed out loud. It was a whimsical experience that I wouldn't mind going through again. One point to the second game. The overworld for both games are different but very similar. The first game is more grounded with the areas you visit, going from a normal neighborhood to a mall to the outskirts. Whereas the second takes you through a swamp, the same neighborhood but expanded and completely dystopian. There's no right or wrong here, it comes down to opinion. For me the second is more interesting with the different time periods and that because the areas you visit are bigger. They give off a lot more world building with more characters and secrets to be found. That being said the first game has mini games in them whereas the second just ignores that. Either way, I prefer the second, so one point to the second game. But that's not all when it comes to the overworld, we gotta talk about the types of costumes you can obtain. The first and second hold similar abilities that can be used during your overworld and in combat. I prefer the first game's costumes, but in truth, I like both. So that's how I draw. Anyways, as music goes, the first game barely has any. Half the time in the overworld, I'm out here exploring with nothing but ambience. And for a game that's supposed to be whimsical and spooky, there's barely any music in it. It put me to sleep multiple times. The second game improves on it, but not by much. Another problem with both games is when the game tells you you need to go trick or treating and it instantly gets boring by the amount they want you to do. In order to progress through the story, you need to go through every house no matter what. And half the time, I don't know what house I need to go to. The first game has no map, so you have to keep track on where you go 
Whereas the second improves on that by adding a map you can buy, but it's a static map with no indication on where you are. And half the houses that you go to have bad guys where you have to fight them. And while that wouldn't be a problem, this is where both games differ for me. As far as turn based games go, both games fail at it, but the first game fails by missing critical features that can make a turn based good. In the first game you only have two moves and that's attack or to use a costume special power, but one of the biggest features for both games is the card system. They play a big role in that the cards you obtain are passive and defensive. Both games use them differently with similar cards in each. So in the first game the cards are used more like power ups where you can give each character on your team one card before any battle to set them up. In combat the cards can be used however you like as long as it's your turn. The cards are always in play and can make battles really really easy and the cards never expire and you can always use them whenever you like. So in the first game you only really have 3 options in combat and I made the game really easy by having one card stun, a costume power to stun and my final turn to poison. So combat while boring and repetitive it went by really fast that being said it's still missing several features where it could have been more fun. Even enemies that were higher than me were never really a challenge. Whereas the second game improves everything but not by much. Now you can defend after everyone's done and it also adds new combat moves as you progress through the game but that's it. The game is still missing several features that makes a good turn base. The combat has now changed from active reload and spinning the sticks to a tapping precision. I prefer the first game system as the second leaves the combat to be more flawed as getting perfect attacks are really hard and the amount of damage you do this time around is not a lot compared to the enemies. And that's where I have multiple issues with. The amount of damage the enemies can do, why is it so goddamn high? One enemy can take out two thirds of my life with one attack and while I can defend against it, what's the point when the enemy can kill me with two hits while defending? I can't make out if it's because I'm in the wrong class or if defending is just pure trash and that's another thing this game added. Now enemies have strengths and weaknesses against the costumes you use but the problem is in most battles you don't know who you're going to be fighting until you're in the battle itself. You have to rely on the RNG and you can't take a turn to switch costumes instead you stick with what you got and pray to god you don't die. I cannot stress this enough, the defense in this game is pure trash, it has never helped once and the game goes out of its own way to turn that rule against you. It allows different enemy types to have unblockable moves that again take out 2 thirds of your life and you can't heal mid battle unless that's your costume's power so you're screwed in a lot of battles. And as for the card system this time around it's more prominent, now they're a one time use so you have to be careful as to when you use it and on who. While this sounds fantastic on paper, this game is significantly worse than the first because you can only have 3 cards in one match, not per character but the whole round and it doesn't make sense, why can't I use all the cards I obtained, at least that way stacking up and making use of them will be fun, instead half the time when I use them I immediately go into another frustrating battle where I have no cards because I forgot to add them. Ok what about the extra new moves the game teaches you? They're trash as well because one of the new moves are to a counter but because enemies attack so fast using it is pointless because you don't know who they are going to attack before they attack and when they do attack it's too slow to counter. Every enemy in this game feels like a boss but the bosses of this game feel like what regular enemies should be as they go down fairly easily. And there you have it, the combat for the first game and the second game. But the biggest sin for both games and what ultimately made me not like them as much as I wanted to is the amount of battles you get into in a short period of time. The first game falls in that it's not that bad because at least combat was easy but the second is just boring, frustrating and just repetitive and I almost quit the whole game if it wasn't for the story. So one more point to the first game. We don't have much time. What did you think overall? So both games have their ups and downs and I can't say outright which is better. The first wins by a marginal difference but nothing substantial. Either way both games do have their charm and I'm surprised to this day that either game isn't on the switch. Done the Wii U <laughs> for some reason. But if this game ever gets re-released on the switch with an update to the second game's damage input then yeah this second game will be way better than the first.
there really isn't much to add. I would like a Cosmic Quest 3 with the story continuing as I feel like you do a lot with it. And I know there's a show but I'm probably never going to check it out. This game was honestly just something for me to do a quick checkout and I was pleasantly surprised by how much fun I had with them but at the same time how boring they were. Overall both games are like an average 5 out of 10 if anything, they're nothing substantial. <laughs> you fool, I am you, but evil. What? You see, I needed to review Crossing Quest 1 and 2, but I was late and I forgot. So I decided I would conduct a device that would let me return to this timeline to have you do it. You made me miss the party just so you, I, could go to the party in the future but not the past? This way, past me, will never be late for another review ever again. But also, past me, I, future you, got to understand what the party was like. This doesn't make much sense. Are you the real one? Am I the real one? Who's the real one? What will I become? Who will I become? Oh my god, there's so many questions. How did I create time travel? Goodbye, loser. What? 